I'm Maria Reams and I'm just so excited. I'm just excited because we are celebrating. We are celebrating on today. Actually, we are celebrating all this month of July. Someone very special, someone very near and dear to not only me, but to this city, but to and also to this nation. Bishop Ernestine Cleveland Reams. That's right. We are right now. I'll be interviewing Bishop Ernestine Cleveland Reams and guess what? Guess what? It is her 86th birthday celebration. And I'm going to ask her some questions on today, something that's near and dear, something that she's kind of known for uh, in this in this nation. Uh, all across this nation, many people uh, know her, the, um, Bishop Ernestine Cleveland Ring. So I just want to ask her some questions and I just want to let the world know, let's celebrate this great woman of God. Hi, Bishop. How are you on today? God bless you, uh, Pastor, precious Pastor Maria Reeves. And it's a pleasure to be here with you today and to enjoy my 86th birthday. I'm excited. Hey. It's wonderful. I, I, I just kind of live in awe and, ooh, it is, it is. You know, it's like it. It just came, and uh, but I'm grateful to God for allowing me to live this long, and I'm super happy. I do have my right mind. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> it's fun, and I love God, and I praise Him for letting me see my 86th birthday. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and and I know that you can answer these questions because because it's something that you do all the time. Mm -hmm. And I want to um, just let the world know the importance of it. And that's prayer. That's prayer. And the first question I want to ask is, um, when did you first realize that you had a command or you had a call on your life to pray? I believe I'll go back all the way uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, when I was five years old. And so I have, uh, what, about six, nine sisters and brothers. And uh, so my mother would get up early in the morning and we'd walk probably a mile or a mile and a half to, to the church, the small church. And Mama would say, who's going with me? Who's going with me? I said, I'm going, I'm going. and. I really believe at that time, God was working in my little heart and knowing that he had this ministry for me. And, and I'm appreciative to him because I've down through the years, I started out traveling as an evangelist. And that would be the first thing I'd organize when I get to your church. When I'd get to the church, I'd say, we're going to come to prayer. It's, seven o'clock or we're going to have eight o'clock prayer and we're going to have 12 noon prayer and i just thank the lord that that's the seed he planted in my heart and i'm appreciative to him and thankful for him allowing me to be a prayer warrior amen can you tell us can you tell us how did it shape your life from back then until now how did it shape your life prayer i believe it it, it helped create some of the good things that I feel that I have. And uh, he baptized me in love and he gave me peace. Uh, we came up poor. We didn't have very much, but I was always the one making everybody laugh and let's just have a good time. And if we make fun of what we had, you know, at that time, people basically back there, uh, 85 years ago, they didn't have silver, they didn't have dishes, mm -hmm. they didn't have all those things. We we ate that cornbread and buttermilk out of a, <laughs> a, 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 a can that we had had some peaches in or something like that. We were, we were poor, but it's okay. It's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. If you allow God to, to really help you to understand it, and he helped me because Everything was just fun to me. I remember my father would, you know, travel and he had a car and he was coming home 
And we'd all get on the porch and say, come, Daddy, come, come, Daddy, come. <laughs> and we'd be out there laughing and shouting and, and praising God. And I believe these things were planted at early in my life. And they were good, good things that gave me a happy life and a joyous life. Hey, Amen. I, I like that because you're taking your past and you believe your past was your foundation. Mm -hmm. And I believe that too. Our past is our foundation and it helps us as we get older in life to realize how blessed we were really are. Yes. We might not have a, had a lot of well, material things, but we were just blessed with love and family uh -huh. and those around us and, and God, of course. Um, did you have a person, and I know that person, but you can share with others. Did you have a person that kind of gave you direction in life that was a mentor? Uh, I believe that everyone needs a mentor in life. Um, uh, did you have that person who kind of showed you the way and kind of helped you and assisted uh, in ministry um, when you were younger? That was my father. My father and I were very, very, very close. I love my dad. And uh, he was such a, a beautiful person that he taught me how to not be judgmental, not criticize, and anything I wanted to talk about. He never made me feel bad. You know, he, he taught me that that's all right, but this is not the time for that now. You know, and he, he showed me a personality that I just loved. He was a person that smiled and he loved everybody, just everybody and anybody. Daddy loved them. He would help them. He would protect young people and, and young people always were around him. Growing up in Berkeley, we moved from uh, Oklahoma to uh, Berkeley, California, 3019 Harper Street. And uh, Daddy brought us there and oh, we were so excited and we were so happy. And you know, it, it, I don't know, but life was quite different. You know, we didn't have a lot, but we never sit around and complained and grumbled and felt bad. And I remember we didn't even have a radio. We didn't have a television. We didn't have a lot of things, but we were happy, happy, and we we all loved each other, and we got that from my mom and my dad. They were very, very beautiful people in the in the sense of being calm. They didn't get excited. They didn't scream and holler. They just was, well, what we're gonna do? We're gonna have to, uh, when I, uh, I had tuberculosis when I was about 14 years old and I had to, go, we lived in Richmond then and I had to go to the sanitarium. I'm going to show you how happy I was. I got on my bike and rode all through the community to tell everybody goodbye because I got to go, <laughs> go to the <laughs> sanitarium. I was, I was just a happy person and then when I got in the ha a sanitarium, they didn't particularly at that time like black people, you know, they treated us bad and ignored us and pushed us aside. And so the kids in the sanitarium didn't want to feel they associate with me. So I would go and help the lady that cleaned the place and make the beds oh, and wash. And we had a ball together. It was, it was so beautiful what my father taught me was that whatever the situation is, learn to live with it. Mm -hmm. Learn to live with it I and like always it. be kind and always love people. And, and uh, it helped me all through my 86 years. That was the thing that blessed me to be in a place of, of joy at 86. I'm, I'm, I'm not jealous of young people. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think some, some uh, older people grow old and mean, mm -hmm. and they treat young people ugly, and they criticize them and push them aside. And I, I never was like that. And they, was, uh, and they were all around me today, and they were back there then too, because I developed that characteristic to love people and be kind. That's one of my questions next, and I 
I know there you have thousands of people out there getting ready to celebrate you on this lovely July 7th um, birthday, 86th birthday. But it's just one more question if I can ask, and I feel it's very important, and I don't want to close without asking you this. Um, what advice, uh, Bishop Reams, would you give to the young woman or uh, woman that's in ministry in this uh, new day and time, new era? What advice would you give them? I would really say, you know, read all the books you can read, learn all you can learn. This is a very, uh, you know, educated, most of the young people today take time to finish college. And uh, so you need to read and to learn and to study and don't make quick decisions and, and love, uh, love everybody, love everybody. It really doesn't matter about color or about intellect or anything like that. Just love, genuinely love people. And you'll find that you'll, you, you will be energized to interact with people. I, I always would come up to you and my name is Ernestine and what is your name? And I wasn't bashful. I was just one of those people, you know, if you ignored me and act like you didn't want to associate with me, I said, well, praise the Lord, go on mm -hmm. to the next person. Mm -hmm. You have to develop your 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 uh personality your personality is a lot of who you are mm -hmm. and people respect you for that so you develop that by being kind uh being a person that you know don't go around your nose in the air and looking down on nobody just just love people if they receive you praise god mm -hmm. if they don't well Thank you, Lord. I don't know what's wrong. I didn't take any time to try to, you know, straighten it out because I knew I was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you, Bishop Reams, for this awesome time of just uh, interviewing you and get, getting some nuggets. I guess that's what we call it, some advice on uh, living a life, living a life of prayer and just uh, being able to uh, celebrate 86 years of life with you on today. I want to thank all the audience. I want to thank all of you for, for listening to this awesome interview with uh, Bishop Ernestine Cleveland Rings. And I want you to help me on today celebrate 86 years of life, wishing her a very happy birthday. Again, this is Maria Rings, and thanks for listening.